Well, don't let the photographs fool you. This is a community with no doctor, no store, barely any people. But what the pictures show that even a dying town can be a very hard place to leave. The map of Canada is dotted with small, isolated communities, many on the brink of extinction. And tonight, we'll tell you about one of them and why. We're headed to Little Bay Islands off Newfoundland. It's one of dozens of outports where the province wants to move people out and save on services. But as Chris O'Neill Yates discovered, some residents are down on packing up. It looks like a good day for skiing anyway. Yeah, Mike Parsons cold. is living his dream. How did you get down without falling down? Ferry didn't run this morning. He and his wife Georgina have made their own okay, private perfect. skating loop on the harbour. They moved back to retire early in Little Bay Islands, at the same time as nearly everyone else is getting ready to leave. In the winter, there are only 46 people who live here. Myself and Georgina, we wanted to become part of the community while it still existed as a community. We absolutely love it. We're outdoors people, we ski, we skate, we snowmobile, we're boating people. So all the things that we love to do are here in Outport, Newfoundland. Money can't buy the happiness that this place brings us. Little Bay Islands is breathtakingly beautiful, but the province believes it can save money by resettling towns like this. The new resettlement policy has the government offering its residents up to $270,000 to move to bigger communities. It will save millions of dollars. The decision to stay or go has created a rift among the handful of residents. I totally get why people want to leave. I totally get why there's some people that might want to stay. I think it's a bad program, primarily because it, it, it targets rural Newfoundland to depopulate it. It's the isolated ones, the small ones, the ones that to a large degree, by the way, are a major attraction to tourists coming to this province. Peter Fenwick is an innkeeper. He's also the mayor of Cape St. George, which is about 370 kilometers away from Little Bay Islands. He's a vocal critic of resettlement. So what happens is people stay, even if they don't want to stay. And the whole program works in entirely the opposite direction of what some foolish bureaucrat has designed it to do. In some cases, Fenwick says people are holding off moving until they can get the government payouts. That only happens when 90% of residents are on board. It may take a decade for some communities, but under the program, they'll get paid much more to leave than their properties are worth. I would hope that the government would say, our deficit is now $2 billion and we can't afford to do this anymore. Take Little Bay Islands. There, the government built a ferry that was too big and costly to start with. It was built for more than $27 million in 2011, and it's more than $16,500 to operate per person per year. Some bureaucrat or some politician in the past has decided that we're going to have this big fancy boat and that we're going to make sure that there's a cook on it who makes $100,000 a year and that virtually the entire crew does. So it's, it's not the blame of the people in the small communities. It's, it's the government's poor policies that have made it so expensive. In fact, today, my videographer and I were the only ones taking the boat on our return trip. About 500 kilometers away, this community took matters into its own hands. Centerville, on its own, was not a viable community but it amalgamated with two others in 1992. Now a combined 1,100 people live here. The Noble family has been manufacturing wood products for 40 years. Shane Noble's relatives already resettled once from a nearby island in the 1950s. He moved to Ontario for a while, but came back to run the family business 15 years ago. After I moved back, I brought four families back home. I was like, I've got an opportunity. You can you come back. Yeah. Every one of them did. The community itself could easily disappear, but there's five or six manufacturers here. There's different people here with the mentality that we want to be here. So we create our own opportunities. One of the new opportunities he's pursuing is a line of affordable modular furniture 
people just don't understand how much opportunity there is in Outport. And that's where Alexa Perry comes it, in. As a child, she moved out of Newfoundland when her parents um, lost their jobs in the cod collapse. I mean, if I told anybody that I was moving to Newfoundland to do marketing, they'd think I was insane. Um, and turns out there's plenty of opportunity here to do marketing. When I come back here to visit and see that that's what's happening, that people are leaving the communities and there's that threat of that history dying, well, I think that's the exact reason that I feel compelled to come back because those roots are still important to me. So Noble believes uh, the there are other reasons visit, that make living here attractive. We're talking to some large corporations who have executives that live in rural Newfoundland simply because we have internet, it's an hour's drive to, to the airport in, say, in Gander, so it's high paying jobs that live here. I take tons and tons of pictures every day in the hundreds of pictures. What I'm trying to do with my pictures is, is kind of create some of that emotional connection to Little Bay Islands. You know, Little Bay Islands cousin doesn't get lost. The Parsons have a plan for after the provincial government cuts off all services. So when the ferry stops, we have our own 42 foot uh, long liner so we can travel. Uh, pretty much year-round. We have uh, three deep freezes in the basement and one is full of fish. Moving into a community that is emptying out is not for everyone. But Parsons believes there's more to life here. These islands and these communities have so much to offer that for people that want to get away from a busy lifestyle, from living in cities or living in parts of the world where they want to get back to the land, and they want to experience a slower pace of life. A life where he and his wife will have the entire island to themselves. Chris O'Neill Yates, CBC News, Little Bay Islands, Newfoundland.